Hey everyone, so uh, for this tutorial I'm going to be going over uh, tutorial 3 of chapter 8 and it essentially looks like this here and it isn't all that bad. Um, the, I think the hardest part is probably getting used to this cylindrical pocket and this rectangular pad thing um, which are kind of, I mean they're somewhat useful, they're, they might be a little bit faster than drawing a sketch and extruding it um, because it is like one it is one, um, I guess, listing here compared to a sketch and an extrude. Um, but that's that's essentially it. So I'll just go ahead and get started with a new file. Okay, so it looks like you'll be making your first sketch on the bottom here, which is the YX uh, plane. Here, now the way that I would start it is I would start like maybe towards the bottom here, towards this bottom corner, and then come up a little bit, draw these lines, select an arc. and do do it like so. Um, so make sure you have these symmetric constraints here because if you don't you'll you'll run into some problems. Now just go ahead and give it some dimensions and of course these dimensions I'm getting them all from the book so Oh, I drew it way too big. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this center to the origin. And it makes, when I do that, it makes an automatic, um, um, coincident constraint. So that helps us a lot later. I think this is 13 here. I'm going to position this line a little bit more down. That way it looks a little better. It looks more like what we're actually going to extrude. Um, I don't know where that symmetric constraint thing is on this, uh, I guess, format. So I'm, I'm just searching it, searching for it here. Okay, so now I'm fully constrained, and this is obviously what we want. So I'll finish the sketch, and I'm going to go ahead and extrude this symmetrically, uh, not five, not ten, five millimeters. And this is what I end up with. And then I will also do another sketch here. All, it, all of this is is a circle and as soon as it snaps to that uh, tangent constraint then you can just click. Unless it disappears like this one did. Okay there we go. And your sketch should be fully constrained since one it is at the origin and two it's uh, tangent to this uh, extrude, which you have already drawn. So I'll go ahead and finish that. I'll symmetric extrude this, 
with a value of 10. I'll hit OK. And now this is what I have. I think the next thing the book wants you to do is cut out this extruded, subtracted piece here. So I'll make a sketch for that on this plane. And note that it might be easier. Let's see. So notice how this Y and this original Y here isn't, uh, they're not parallel. So that might give you issues a little later on. I mean, it'll, it's going to give me issues a little later on, but we'll see. I mean, as long as it's on this face, I guess it's fine, but you'll see what I mean. So I'm just going to draw more or less what it looks like. If you see it wanting to snap to like all these things, and some of them are helpful, some of them really aren't. But I, I don't want to make I want to make sure it doesn't snap to any of them. So I'll draw it about right there. Okay, so I have no no um, inferred constraints. The only one that's there is this parallel constraint which I should do to this other line here. And here's where I'll do it to this line here too. Oh, whoops. Not that line. Oh. Ah, kind of confusing. Okay. And this one too, just to be safe. Okay, so now we just need to add some dimensions. So let's see, I know from here, from here to here is, is 82. Um, sometimes you'll get it to where the dimension wants to go like if you click on certain points like let's say I click here and here to dimension this it'll want to come down like this but notice how this line here isn't um, collinear or isn't I'm sorry parallel with this with this other line right here so that that'll be a problem so if I move it a little bit this way see usually it'll like snap to it I guess not but you don't want this con you don't want this um, dimension here you want you want the distance between this line this whole line and this whole line so it will be a little bit like a, a little bit angled I mean And this should be 54. Um, from here to here should be 20. Um, the next thing that I would recommend doing is doing uh, those fillets here at the corners. So I'll enter a radius of 3. And it'll be this corner and this corner, here, and then way over here, these should be two, a radius of two each. Okay, and then to make everything finalized, I'll go ahead and add, this is the, the search uh, command, the find a command thing. So if you can't find it within here, which I couldn't, then obviously just type it in. See if you can find it. Um, but it's this line here, or this line here. And then my center will be this X. Oh, I even have some. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, because this line and this line are equal, I guess these are over constrained. I'll just delete one of them. Oh, and these two. Oh, okay. Yeah, I need one more constraint. So it's the 14 here. So make sure to select this point and this point. And you see how my dimension is like snapping to different things here. I want that dimension, not this one here. The one that is more parallel to uh, this line there and I want that to be 14 okay so now we're fully constrained uh, I'll finish the sketch and then I'll extrude this it's gonna extrude down this way and I want it to go until next and it'll go all the way to the bottom and then I'll subtract it and then under draft I'll select from selection and then my angle will be 5 degrees it presets it as 5 degrees I think if it doesn't then just enter 5 and then hit OK and then if I snap to the side here um, and I look at my wireframe view there is in fact an angle here and the angle between this line and this horizontal line here is 95 the angle between the imaginary vertical line here and this slanted line here that angle right there is 5 okay so now um, I'm gonna skip one step that way we can do these other things, this this uh, hole here, or s cylindrical pocket later. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do these things called uh, the pad, the pad features here. And this is, in fact, the icon for the pad feature, so make sure it's somewhere here on the left for you guys if you're doing it there in the lab. Okay, so I'll go to rectangular, and then here I'll select this face, and then the horizontal reference will be this line here. And make sure you have this arrow pointing uh, to the right, right here. And then the dimensions that you will enter uh, let's see, so we have 30 we have 20 and we have 5 and then the corner radius is 0 taper angle is also 0 so that should be okay so now we just need to give it some dimensions of where to put this thing so I'm gonna go ahead and select a perpendicular if I go back this if I leave the the cursor over a little bit it'll show that this dimension or positioning uh, constraint is perpendicular is a perpendicular constraint so I'll click it here and then you'll kind of see what it does. So if I select this line here, and then I select a line on the pad, it's going to ask for a length right here. And that's essentially all it is. So if you look at the dimensions, this length should be 5. And then I'm going to go ahead and do another one for... I think the book might might do this different, but it is the same it is the same. What I'm doing is the same thing. So I'll select this line here, and then I'll select this line here. And this, I think, should be 8.5, which is uh, 17 divided by 2, which is 30 minus 13. Yeah, 30 minus 13 is 17, and 17 divided by 2. But yeah, it's, it's 8.5. Eight and it doesn't change yet but it will change once you hit OK or I think once you hit cancel 
Oh yeah, so it moved already. Okay, so I'll just hit cancel. And if I look at from the front, yeah. Um, it is in fact, um, it looks like it's in the right position. So, so we're good. And now we need another rectangular pad. So, I'll just go to that feature again. <clears throat> um, I'll close this. And I will select this face here. And then I'll go ahead and and I'll pick this as my horizontal reference. And then these values will be 28 and 30 for my height. And then these, again, are still 0, so that's, that's okay. Um, I'll go ahead and go to perpendicular again. So just by looking at the dimensions, I can see that there's no, there's virtually no distance between this edge and this edge. So I'm just going to enter zero. And then the distance between perpendicular again, this edge, and this edge should be... Uh, 30 minus 8, which is 22, divided by 2, which is 11. And I'll hit OK. And that's essentially what we have. Um, now, I'll go ahead and make uh, this edge blend here. This uh, edge should have a radius of 10 millimeters, so it'll be this edge here, and it'll also be this edge here. And I'll just hit OK. And those are the only edge blends that you have to do for this particular tutorial. And now I'll go ahead and go into the um, into the pocket feature for this tutorial. So I want a cylindrical pocket and I will go to next I'll click on this face and then here's where I'll just describe the pocket. It's supposed to be 15 millimeters in diameter and then the depth it should go through the whole thing here and this whole thing from the dimensions is 20 millimeters um, these two stay zero and then here I'm going to select uh, this point onto point and then I'll go ahead and select this uh, edge of extrude this outer circle here and then I'm going to pick arc center and then it's kind of confusing now so now I'll go ahead and select this uh, placed um, circle here and then I'm going to select the arc center there and already it puts it there so we're essentially done and what the menu is asking for now is essentially another pocket so now we'll go ahead and select this face and then we'll enter the dimensions for the following pocket which is 12 and then it should have a depth of 8 and these two stay 0 again so we'll go to point onto point, and then we'll select this arc, the arc center, this edge, or this uh, circle that it should put there. You should see this um, circle there. I mean, it's not, they don't position it like where exactly you want it um, just yet, but when you go and you hit, you hit arc center here, it sure enough puts it, it makes, uh, this pocket here and this uh, edge here cocentric essentially and really that's that's about it um, so now I'll just go ahead and hide all and then I'll show the bodies here and that's pretty much all of tutorial 3 so thanks for watching and if you have any questions feel free to email me of course uh, some students they've actually just sent me um, their part file and what I do is I essentially just look at the file I, I look at the file whether I'm at the lab or whether um, I'm home at my computer or something I can just like open it up I can look and see what's wrong with it and what I do is I essentially just take uh, screenshots of my computer and I I'll like edit it or something and I'll say like oh well here 
this is the problem here, so make sure to take a look at this or something. I mean, I can't, like, obviously fix it and then send it back to you because uh, I think somewhere in there it record the file will record that it's been on my computer. So, I mean, either way that's cheating, but I will help you um, if you do send me your part file. So if you do want to and it's, like, kind of a maybe a small problem, then feel free to do that. Um, other than that, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys soon.